Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is May the 25th, 2024. Let's talk about Lawrence Okoli's spectacular showing against Lucas Rosansky. Okoli is now the Bridgerweight champion, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just point out here, and I know many of us here online look at fight films and try to predict fights, right? If you're one of those people, this is a very impressive fight. Okoli, in his first fight at Bridgerweight, which is one weight class up from Cruiserweight, said he wanted to put the KO back in Okoli, and he did just that dominant performance now this is a one round fight that is worth keeping right to the handicappers out here this is one of those special films it's only one round long now viewers here know that i like tall fighters who can leverage their height by leaning backwards right think ali against sonny liston a great fight between two greats where both were tall and both were leaning backwards is Lennox Lewis against Vitaly Klitschko, two of my favorites uh, all time. Now this Okoli fight is that rare, and I mean rare, fight where a tall guy, and Okoli is 6'5", understand he's around Lennox Lewis's height. This is that rare fight where a tall guy uses length while leaning forward and being on his front foot. Akoli, who has an excellent jab that needs to be emphasized. I believe you need an excellent jab to pull this off. Akoli does it by always having that excellent jab out front with his power hand cocked back here. Right? Looks like my AI background is hiding my hands. Let's just say, in real life, when Akoli has his right hand cocked and he's hitting you with his jab, you don't know when that cocked hand is going to hit you. Sometimes you can't even see the cocked hand because you're getting hit with the Carlos Monzon level jab. You're getting bludgeoned off the jab. Akoli doesn't have to hit you with another punch. That jab is kind of like a power punch. You're getting bludgeoned off the jab. That's keeping you busy. You forget about Okoli's dominant hand, his right hand, which is going to come unexpectedly behind it. So Okoli always has his jab out front. Rosansky can never get by it. And, of course, Okoli's chin is nicely protected behind the jab. He's never naked in the pocket without a hand up and his chin over the pocket. He's never naked. Let me also make another point, too. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that the Archie Moore defense, where Moore has a forearm up protecting his chin, um, one of his students, George Foreman, same thing, copied Archie, had a forearm up, protecting his chin. Understand, these guys were extremely cerebral, right? Both knockout punchers, but both guys paid attention to defense. They weren't just about the power, right? I believe that's superior to the Lucas Rosansky style of defense, where he has his hands perpendicular to the canvas. They're kind of like goalposts, right? And because they're goalposts, you can actually score. You can get to his chin because his chin's unprotected. His chin is between the goalposts. Right now, Rosansky does have a lot of attributes. We'll talk about that later. I believe here's where gamblers make their money. The rest of the world is going to 
write off this guy, just like the world wrote off Joe Parker after he lost to Joe Joyce, right? Gets stopped, gets battered in that fight. And of course, then Parker goes on to beat Deontay Wilder and to beat Gili Zhang, right? Parker now is very much in the mix at heavyweight. I believe it's a mistake. It's a mistake to write off Lucas Rosansky. I believe Rosansky has a lot of great things. But let's get back to Lawrence Ocoli here. Because there's a jaw-dropping moment to this fight, and it's not even the first knockdown. Understand, Ocoli lands two flush straight right hands. He has an excellent straight right hand. And Rosansky hits the canvas twice. Looks terrible. Right? Looks like he's been bombed out. But the kicker is the third knockdown. The one that ends the fight. Okoli comes in and folks forget about the straight right hand. He throws a picture perfect uppercut. It's May and I can already tell you that that's going to be one of the best uppercuts you're going to see from any fighter in any weight class all year. Right? He hits Rosansky, who still hasn't figured out defense, who still hasn't figured out how to protect his chin, who cannot see the right hand coming, whether it's a straight right behind the jab or whether it's an uppercut from down low. Rosansky cannot see Okoli's right hand. He gets hit on the chin. It is so surgical that you have to look at the replay to see the punch land. I'm not kidding. It is so surgical that when Rosansky hits the canvas in front of a very pro Rosansky crowd, right? Okole, other than the guys in his corner, doesn't look like he has three friends in the building. This is even worse than the crowd bias in the Chris Billum Smith fight. Right, just to understand, he th hits Rosansky with the uppercut. Rosansky hits the canvas. Folks, you know he's not getting up. He's had enough of Lawrence Ocoli's right hands. This is a coup de grace moment. So now life has changed. Understand, Ocoli is the Bridgerweight champion. It is an important division that they need to start listing on BoxRec.com. BoxRec, what are you doing? This is, a, this is a real division, right, with a real champion. Let me make another point, too. 224 pounds is the weight limit for the division. I need for you to understand how competitive bridger weights are going to be with heavyweights. An argument can be made that former heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder has the best punch in the heavyweight division, right? I'll agree, Anthony Joshua, blessed puncher with both hands. But as I make this video, I cannot say that Joshua's right hand is better than Deontay Wilder's straight right. Right? Joshua, probably a better overall puncher because of his left hand, because he's two-handed. But understand, when we talk about one-punch knockout power at heavyweight, Deontay Wilder's name has to be toward the very top of that analysis. I would say that I would rather get hit with a Joshua straight right than a Wilder straight right. Well, just understand, Wilder has fought several fights under 224 pounds, including his last two fights against Robert Hellenius and Joe Parker. Right, as I mentioned in an earlier video, there are several heavyweight champions who weighed 224 pounds or less, including major punchers. So, Lawrence O'Coley, particularly this version, Understand, Okoli was weight-drained at cruiser. 
You look at him now, he looks bigger. The power is obvious. And he's skilled, right? If you can't get by that jab, you're going to lose to him. Right? Chris Billum Smith, really, Okoli should have beaten him at 200, but Okoli had no punch resistance at 200. He was cutting weight too much. I don't think Chris Billum Smith would have a chance against Okoli at 224 pounds. I don't think that fight would be competitive. More importantly, I believe Okoli should be considered a major threat at heavyweight. Alexander Usyk is going through the United Kingdom, right? Derek Chisora, uh, AJ Dubois, Tyson Fury, right? Just to understand, he's running out of UK fighters to fight. I think Fabio Wardley would be an interesting fight because Wardley's so unstructured. Uh, Joe Joyce would be a big man on his front foot who would try to convince Usyk that he's the big man in the ring, right? Joyce, though, might be too slow-handed and too slow-footed to trouble Usyk. I would argue that Joe Joyce, and I understand Joe Joyce is from New Zealand, but Joe Joyce has been fighting out of the UK, right? I think Joe Joyce, uh, excuse me, Joe Parker would be an excellent test for Alexander Usyk. You know I feel here that Usyk wants no part of Philippe Bergovic. Well, understand, Usyk would have a problem against Lawrence Okoli, right? Because Okoli's jab is the kind of jab that Usyk would have to try to jump inside of. Okoli has a trait that I know fans hate, but he's one of the best at it, and it's one of the most important traits in boxing. Okoli, in addition to having one of boxing's best jabs, is one of the masters in the sport at clinching. In other words, if Okoli fought this fight like Ali fought several fights in the 1970s, where a guy gets inside, look at Ali Ron Lyle, a guy gets inside and Ali grabs him. Right? Ali prevents inside fighting from developing. Meanwhile, from the outside, of course, Ali had fast hands uh, and could follow up with combinations. Lawrence Okoli could give Usyk problems. Let me talk about, and this will sound bizarre here, let me talk about the fight I believe is the blueprint on how to beat Usyk. Believe it or not, it's from the guy who just lost. Again, this is how you make your money. The fans fall out of love with a fighter. They say that guy got spanked, right? They don't think in terms of the fact that this isn't even the first fight where Rosansky got caught by an opponent and hit the deck. Rosansky, Arthur Spielka, I want to encourage people to look at that film. That's also a film you should keep. Rosansky's still dangerous. Spielka, 6'3", 6 Southpaw like Usyk, right? Likes it to use his jab. It's a right jab, kind of like Usyk's jab. That fight starts, believe it or not, Spielka in the opening seconds of that fight. Drops. Rosansky. Rosansky gets off the canvas, right? Then you notice Rosansky has fast feet. I don't care what the guy looks like. The guy could look like Jackie Gleason. I couldn't care less. It's how does he move? How does he punch? He went into the Okoli fight with a better than 90% KO ratio. Right? Can this guy move around the ring? Is there a suddenness? Is there an element of surprise to his game? What I want people to do is to look at how Rosansky against Spielka, who he ends up knocking down later in the first round, how Rosansky deals with Spielka's right jab, right? Rosansky can move outside, move back inside, then jump on you. Now, the problem with big hitters who are short punchers is they want their hands ready to hit you, 
right? The whole point of them being a short puncher is to jump in and land a shot. So they aren't throwing the punch out of a defensive stance, right? Of course, history has exceptions, right? I'll concede Joe Lewis is pretty shrewd with his defense. I'll, I'll concede that, but not Rosansky, right? So Rosansky is sudden. He has power. If he gets up on your chest, I'm telling you, you're finished. This is a big, clunky heavyweight era. Some of the heavyweights out there don't have. Lawrence Acoli's jab. Right? I would say Martin Bacoli, for example, doesn't have. Lawrence Acoli's jab. Right? If you can't keep Rosansky outside, He's going to cause all kinds of problems for you. So let's not have knockouts here cause amnesia, right? I'm not saying Rosansky won this fight. No, he was dominated by Lawrence Acoli, who was on his A game. This is a very important fight, right? It would have been important either way. You know, whoever won the fight, this is a very important fight. Acoli is now toward the front of the heavyweight division. If he wants to hang around Bridger, good for him. But all I'm saying is, Okoli had to lose weight, believe it or not, according to him, to make the Bridger weight limit. So if I'm Okoli and I'm 6'5", and I'm looking around the heavyweight division, and I'm thinking, hey, there are a lot of guys out here I can make my name against. Bridger weight checks don't buy as many groceries as heavyweight checks. Right? If I'm Okoli, I thank the Bridger weight division, but I'm moving on to heavyweight. Let me make another point too. I saw Maris Breedis, he was dominated by Jay Opataya. The Bridger weight division is gonna give these older cruisers a new life. I'm shocked to see Uniel Dordicos still fighting at cruiser, right? The cruiser weight division seems to be an addiction. Well, these days now, Right? A Steve Cunningham, who didn't have this option years ago, a Steve Cunningham can say, hey, let me fight guys at Bridger weight. As opposed to dealing with heavyweights like Tyson Fury. So all of these older cruiserweights, Gilberto Ramirez, for example, I know he just got to the cruiserweight division, just like Okoli just got to the Bridger weight division. But understand, Ramirez has admitted that he has to lose weight to make cruiser weight. A guy like that would benefit from fighting in a bridger weight division. I believe the bridger weight division has huge potential. I would not be surprised if Amaris Breedis decides to continue his career at Bridger. I would not be surprised if Ajay Opataya decides, hey, okay, I've been king of the hill at cruiser. What's to stop me from trying to challenge at Bridger weight while holding on to the cruiserweight title? Let's remember, this is a sport where, at a time where you had eight weight classes, Henry Armstrong was the champion in three of them. Right, so let me congratulate um, Lawrence Acoli. Let me just say, I know boxing scene in an article that's posted today, is calling Rosansky hapless. I'm telling you, that's more beer for us. Right? If I were AJ, I would not want to fight Lucas Rosansky. Because again, if Rosansky slips the jab and gets inside, you got big problems. I was surprised Okoli took this fight. Fortunately for Okoli, he landed early, right? I believe first round knockouts could happen to anyone, quite frankly. You're cold, you don't know the angles, you get hit with a bomb, your knees start to shake, you never recover, right? Okoli, great jab, better jab than AJ, by the way, right? AJ, the best AJ jab I've seen was AJ against Joe Parker. Let's remember AJ beat Joe Parker. Right, but understand, Okoli's jab really is a bit special. And it showed in this fight. So, um, I think this is just going to be more interesting for all of us. I hope Lucas Rosansky gets back in the ring 
sooner rather than later, right? Because I believe his next few fights, because of this debacle, are going to be mispriced. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.